sick. Put this to music. Kia ora, Lele. Good evening. I'm Andrew Mulligan. She's Storm Purvis. And tonight on The Crowd Goes Wild, as you know, we are awesome at sitting down and going fast as a country. The All Blacks aren't to be totally awesome just yet, OK? The Silver Ferns aren't angry. They're just disappointed. And Smashed and Bro is not disappointing this week. All that plus we check in with the latest CKB star for the Octagon. But first... Juicy news story at the top of the show. Yes, leading your CGW tonight with the Rugby World Cup turtling on the horizon of our collective subconscious. You'll be forgiven for not caring about any other sport going on right now. But not us, OK? It's yeah. our job and we take it bloody seriously. So as you can serious. tell by our jovial nature of casual <laughs> attire. Here's some cars and stuff. Good things come in fours, like Ninja Turtles, The Beatles and goddamn World MX titles. Hey, Courtney. Like, honestly, I don't think I ever would have dreamed of having four. It's, I, I'm lost. I, I don't really know what else to say. Just grateful for this moment. Yeah, friend of the show, Courtney Duncan, just earned her fourth world title with mum on hand to make a nappy sand ad out of that white T-shirt. And from one champ to another, just not this time. Scott Dixon came tantalisingly close to his seventh IndyCar title. You can always pick a, a season to, to pieces. All in all, you got to look at the big picture. To, to secure one-two in the championship, that's tough to do. In this competition, it's really tough to do. And, and for us to rebound the way that uh, the team did, you know, is a testament to everything that they do. Scott needed some divine intervention to secure the title, with his teammate Alex Pillow ahead in points. But sadly, he finished just below Pillow. Hey, that rhymes. Hello, Pillow! And speaking of close, our newest F1 driver was just shy of the points in Monza, finishing 11th. It's a bit like finishing second when you're um, when you finish P11, uh, just one place shy of points. Come on, bro. At least you got to start, unlike your teammate. That I'm afraid is the Alpha Tauri pulling over to the side. Uh, failure, AG failure. Copy. After quali, he managed to hold his 11th position to the end despite this bullshit from Oscar at the tail end of the race. And Piastri having to bail out of the uh, chicane there. That's, See, a hand, that's a hand back then, isn't it, that one? It certainly should be. Man cutting corners like it was bloody Mario Kart. But don't worry, he got pinged. And fingers crossed we get to see Liam in Singapore too. Expecting to be in the car in Singapore? Do you I know? have no idea. Right now, yeah, no idea. All right then, keep your secrets. <laughs> what he said. James Fitz, crowd goes wild. <laughs> He probably has no idea, but really, Singapore is street track. It's going to be harder on your, on your hands. And it was one of the phalanges or metatarsals or something that Ricardo broke. Yeah. So he's unlikely to be racing in Singapore. It's surgery to Liam is likely, yeah. He's probably got the next couple as well. Oh. And they're probably, like, I think Christian Horner is pretty adamant that he's going to be there for at least a couple more GPs. Yeah, well, that would be great. He's the red so, like, boss. a full-time seat. Also, Next time round. yeah, that is what well, that's because everyone else is up for contract as yeah, well. Yeah. Certainly. Now, Courtney Duncan, let's talk oh. about how much of a legend she, she is. She's obviously Josh Cronfeld's um, best friend. Yes. And great of the relationship. Show. Yes. But also, she was injured last year. So she could have made it four in a row last year. Really wanted to make it four in a row. Injured last year. It's come in this year. Done it. Could have been five in a row, but no, four from four. She's a legend. I, pff, she's amazing. And because, like, she comes from New Zealand, obviously. From the, Palmerston. Palmerston. Not, not Palmerston North. Just Palmerston. Just Palmerston. And if you have been to Palmerston in Otago, yeah. Finish that sentence. It is. It's there. <laughs> it's there. Right, the All Blacks have touched down it's in the Shore Town and are ready to rip into World Cup Week 1. Ford's coach Jason Ryan is licking his lips at playing in front of a beret-wearing, pinot-drinking, Trey Beyond crowd. The New Zealand fans can be a little bit dry <laughs> at time, you know, like we're sitting there and, oh, no, you know, don't make a noise or anything like that. The French just, they, they just get right into it, don't they? They're singing and, you know, there'll be a couple of vinos in the stand and they'll just be really embracing it and it'll just be so electric. And I think that that's probably the special thing about, about France and the, the people they are and how passionate they are and how enthusiastic they are and that's the way they play, you know, the a little bit freestyle and they just embrace themselves and I think that's the probably the, the special part of why this World Cup is it's going to be a little bit different to others. 
And we'll get to experience all that at full flight this weekend because just in case you forgot, the opening game is the All Blacks taking on this guy and Le Bleu. Looked as dangerous. When you're the, the home nation, the, the pressure's uh, massive. You know, we've heard that through um, our boys a little bit the last couple of days that have been involved in a few World Cups, some of them four. This will be their fourth, and um, they talked around that. And, um, you know, we'll use that as a little bit of energy. And, um, you know, they, they've got a few dings. We've got a few dings as well. So um, it, it should be a hell of a contest in what is a very special stadium. A few dings, all right. What, starting lock, first five, centre, and prop. Yeah. Kind of worse than us. But a lot of what they do goes through DuPont, the halfback oh, as well. Isn't he amazing? Yeah. He's, in, he's incredible. Captain, yeah. But also, I believe the pressure is too much for France. I really do. Well, yeah, Jason's saying that. He's kind of really planting the underdog seed. Yeah. Which I guess most people and punters would agree with, but it still feels weird to kind of admit. It feels like when Ireland turn out to Rugby World Cup, invariably they run into us in a quarter final. It doesn't go well for them, but in between World Cups, they roll us at home, they roll us in <laughs> Chicago, they roll us. They roll us in Dublin. Yeah. But put it all on the line, Storm Purvis, your Rugby World Cup predictions. Okay. If we stay disciplined, well, I just think we'll win it. Yeah. I really think we will. Cards and injuries. Cards and injuries. We win it. Yeah. Who do we play in the quarterfinals? South Quarter Africa. Quarterfinals. Yeah, oh. South Africa or Ireland? Because they're in the same pool. I know, they're this bloody pool side of death. I actually don't know. So, <laughs> so, do you think we beat France? Ask me if I was all right. I'm fine. I'm not going into early labour. Sorry. Oh, God. Um, I think, I, I do think we'll beat France this weekend. Yeah. Um, I think it'll be Ireland in the quarterfinal, which is terrifying. So, but, South Africa beat Ireland in their pool? Yes. It's all on, quarter past seven. Can you believe it's here? I cannot. Crazy. Let's go to camera one. To Edgebeston we go now, where the... Black Cat! <laughs> Whoa, good one, guys. Rodney. <laughs> he was good. No, okay. he was about half a second late. Anyway, the Black Cats have pulled one back from the English, winning game three of the T20 series by 74 runs this morning. They had their heads in the game right from the toss. Heads is a call. It is heads. Tim, you've won the toss, what are you going to do? Uh, we're going to have a bet. Oh, are you what, Finellan? All the way, slapping 83 from the middle of 53 balls to get the party started. Straight over his head. That one dragged down, this time uh, leg side. Back to back sixes. Oh, back to back to back sixes. That perhaps the very best of the day so far. Relax, Docs. Finn and the boys set a chase of 2 3 and things did not get off to a good start for England. Comes in and takes it comfortably, Mark Chapman, with the catch. And Jamison's welcome back to the New Zealand setup. Has produced an early wicket for him. Oh, that's gone up a long way. It will take some catching. Taken. Straight up. The set in yeah. the water. You can get Take that, that England. Take it. New Zealand catching all 10 English wickets to no win by 74 runs. All caught. Yeah, all caught. I, I, now, I looked into that. Yeah. Like catching all 10 wickets, it's not a thing. What do you mean it's it not a thing? It happens all the time. Oh, OK. Yeah. You get a stat for everything in cricket, so... I know. No, it's not a thing. It's not a thing. Oh, lame. I know. I'm like an idiot now for making that a big deal. But Finn Allen, though. Finn Allen. He needed that. Timely. 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 He's been criticised for just going too hard and early. Um, but his first 20, 20 runs were hit off 20 balls. So maybe that's just what he needs to do. Just Steady into it. No noodle, noodle it? Yeah. Is that a term? Noodle it. Oh, you would have thought I hosted it with a cricket player for a long time and I didn't listen to a thing he said, so it's I great. I don't blame you, it's fine. Mm. After the break, the Ferns Phoenix Karaka with refreshing honesty, Storm. Mm -hmm. The next game, uh, name out of the CKB gym, you need to know. And Arsenal leave it late against Man U. Now, Rocco Jameson, the second of our Kiwis. He was in the conversation of those top spots, very, very close, within touching distance on a 79.5. Here he comes, coming for that frontside rotation that we were talking about. Frontside 14, oh. so solid. That Falls. was beautiful. Yeah, local snowgrom Rocco Jameson absolutely sent it today at the Junior World Championships at Cardrona. He plays second in the big air against the stack field. Good on you, Rocco. Well, welcome back, everybody. The Silver Ferns are ready to bury the Nepal World Cup ghosts of their past and rip into the new international window.
which starts with three tests against England this month. Yes, the Fernies were floating around at Sky today, so I did what I do best, be an absolute office pest, with a camera and a microphone this time. If you knew the real her. Obviously, I beelined for injured superstar Grace Wickey, because we all need an update on that knee. The knee's good. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, like, it wasn't even that bad when it happened, but I couldn't jump, so couldn't do my job. What do you think the timeline is at the moment? My timeline is ASAP. Physio reckons six, seven weeks. Con Cup, maybe. We'll see. Yeah. Constellation Cup isn't until October, but for then we have the tiny Jameson Trophy to defend. You may have seen the news last week that England are pretty much sending over a development side, and we're all a little bit peeved. I haven't actually really looked at it, taken any notice. Wait, is this crowd? Or Oh, so I can like be a bit of a douchebag. OK. <laughs> <laughs> what, you place second at World Cup and think you guys need a break? Nah, <laughs> jokes. I mean, are we surprised? <laughs> like, really? Like, are you surprised? Really. No. Despite all that and the fact the girls are coming off their worst World Cup campaign ever... The vibes feel good at the moment, though. Yeah, positive vibes. We've got some new faces, new energy, people who weren't in the mix who are bringing us up and it's exciting for everyone. We've got some cool things coming up. So, yeah, it's positive vibes still. One of those new faces is defender Kate Burley, who's set to make her Ferns debut after a fab year in the Deep South. What can you tell me about Katie B? She does not shut up. <laughs> She's everywhere. She's a um, firecracker. It's not even, like, bad. It's just she, she just loves to chat. Yeah, Katie B is Katie B. She's um, an energiser bunny. She brings a lot of energy. Kate loves to just yarn about everything and... <laughs> A million miles an hour. I've been asking the girls to put an intel yeah. about you. And <laughs> oh, no. the number one thing that's come up is that Loud. you... Loud. Negative. <laughs> Energetic. <laughs> Doesn't shut up. <laughs> but no, I'm very excited. And I kind of came in yesterday and I was like to Kate here, I was like, please tell me if I need to shush. She's like, I will, I will. And I was like, yeah, please do, because I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> really excited, laughing it all up. As you should be, Katie B. Up the ferns. OK, I want to flip this whole discourse about these guys not bringing their top squad over. It's going to be good for us because, you know, we just need to get our confidence back. It's going to be a confidence boost, gonna... confidence boost in one, right? Exactly, and we are going to have our own newbies out there as well. Yeah. It's still a test, OK? It, it, it'll be fine. It starts on the 24th of September, three in a row and then we have to face Australia, who we haven't faced in so long. For like the first time in forever, have not faced them at the last World Cup or Commonwealth Games. And I do so like... So it's an exciting year of netball. Sorry, yes, what? No, the series. I, I mean, I like a series. Yeah. I mean, the netball World Cup is great, obviously, yes. but then to have a series against the Diamonds, and obviously the English. Yes. Oh, no, it's great, exactly. You get, you get a chance to just settle Are in. You're OK. There's less pressure. Am yeah. I talking quickly? No, no, I'm just, I'm just checking in on you because you get so excited about it. Well, I am finally excited about it. I wasn't very happy with netball for a while there. <laughs> to be honest. Were you, were you angry at netball? I was angry at netball. Aww. There was too much going on and I wanted everyone to think about the netball and then they disappointed me. Anyway. Right, if you thought UFC 293 couldn't get any more stacked, then you're about as wrong as the almond croissants they sell at BP. Another one of CKB's very own was announced on the card last week. And I can almost guarantee he avoids croissants from petrol stations for more reasons than one. <laughs> this is how Kevin Jose found out he was joining the UFC. Nah, just jokes. That was Eugene telling him to stay away from Wairangi Kōpū. Face him. OK. Oh, oh yeah. wow. The actual announcement went a little more like this. Kevin, welcome to the UFC. He'll be fine. Yeah! A pretty intense moment, if you ask the Frenchman. That was, uh, that was intense. That was very intense. But I tried to keep my emotion... Uh, clear and like not going too crazy because at the end of the day the contract is great but what really matters is winning those fights. Those fights have been a long time coming. The 30 year old started competing in judo at the age of four and rose to the top becoming a national champion in France. He's since turned his focus to MMA where his record stands at eight wins to two losses. Four years ago he was based across the ditch in Australia but then he caught wind of CKB and the rest was history. And I came here, love the country, love the people, love the gym and uh, I've been here since. And he didn't even need to pull out any good French wine to get in the door. Eugene was picking up what Kevin was putting down. I really liked the fact that I was bringing different skills coming from a, a grappling background and uh, most of the guys here were coming from a striking background so I could help them in some areas where I've trained in a long time. 
There's no question that CKB is the place to be if you want to be a UFC champ. Of course, like training next to some of the biggest stars in the sport, that's very inspiring. And it also shows me the way, you know, it shows me what I need to do uh, to get to where I want to be. And like any decent fighter, he's got a fight name. Uh, Kevin Air, je vous sais, Air, because like I take people down and uh, I make them fly, obviously because of the judo takedowns, I can leave them quite high. And as for French food in New Zealand. I'm cooking the best French food here in New Zealand, trust me. <laughs> I actually love cooking, that's uh, one of my, one of the stuff I love doing when I'm not training. So yeah, like I've been to some French restaurants, I won't say any name, but I'm pretty good at cooking French food. Yeah, well, I'm really good at eating it. Anna Wilcox, Crowd Goes Wild. What a legend. I thought, I'm glad that Graphic Air was put up there because when I watched that in the office earlier, it wasn't up and I thought he was just saying Kevin Eh, like a French guy. <laughs> <laughs> and that was his fighting thing. <laughs> Should have I said that off air quietly, not on air or? That's pretty good. Okay, cool. I like that. Yeah. Uh, book it and it will, it will come. <laughs> Izzy Strickland, obviously. It's going to be the big fight. There's a, there's a whole bunch of CKB yeah, fighters, right. just not Kaikara France, unfortunately. But uh, there will be a lot carrying the flag there for, um, for the CKB it's a machine, in Sydney. CKB. Tim provises there as well. He is, so make sure you watch him on Thursday. There'll be some good content. <laughs> that will be content plus. Content. <laughs> All right, brace yourself, farmers. We've got some EPL glory for you. Like your calves, Liverpool came out hangry in the opening minutes and forced their way through to the front with the boot of a Hungarian. What a start for Liverpool! And what a hit, by the way! Mo Salah and Nunez teamed up, which left Aston Villa chasing harder than the Saudis. McGinn might reconsider eating his carrots after he couldn't find the net in the dark. First real opportunity of the game goes begging. Oh. Now the second half, they moved them into the light, but that didn't work. While Liverpool's Salah had one thing to say to the 150 million pound peanuts God. he was offered from Saudi Arabia. They say he's not for sale. Yeah, Man United's Rashford came through with his Jedi mind tricks. It does it again! Shades of a year ago! <laughs> but Arsenal responded faster than a 3 a.m. booty call. Oh, in an instant! Man, you tried to play the long game, but that got seen out by the VAR. It's red by a minuscule margin. And just when you thought it was over, Arsenal served up this beauty. Controlled by Declan Rice! Oh! He squeezed it in! Declan Rice with his first goal for Arsenal! It's absolutely priceless! They scored one more for good measure and a hush, or the doubters 3-1 to Arsenal. Stressful. Still to come on the show, the Farah Palmer Cup semis are kicking on. Rue Demont explains the nuances of kicking to Israel Dag and the subtle differences that can change the direction of a player in Smash Nice. Yeah. Welcome back. There were plenty of KOs in the weekend, and no, I'm not talking about the jabby kind. I'm talking about semi-finals footy in the Farah Palmer Cup. Disclaimer, there were no punches, although it would have felt like Auckland took two when Waikato oh. stampeded their way through. Yes. And now Mark here again, driving to the line and over. Quite roll over. And they say lightning never strikes twice, but how about thrice? Well, they... Here's Baha'i swerving, and look at Mickey, Mickey Baha'i, chalk up another one. The score was even with 72 minutes to go. If only we had a big time player stepping up in a big time moment. <laughs> They'll face reigning champs Canterbury, who absolutely blitzed the Hawks Bay Tui. This opens up again for Holly Greenway. She's going to score a hat trick. The Bay were able to score a couple off Canterbury's mistakes, but it wasn't enough to push them through to the final. For the Hawks Bay, throwing the ball on quick hands from Owa, and that is the champagne rugby. I say, pop that champagne anyway. To the championship now, where after spending four years as a bridesmaid, Northland finally caught the bouquet. The goal, it comes back on the inside, and she's got a ocean Teddy. Northland Cody have two. But like any good wedding, it wasn't without its fair share of drama. Northland somehow holding on. This time, Otago ran. 
The Cody Nab the win despite some mixed emotions. While the Manawatu Cyclones tore through the Tasman Marco like a blockbuster film. To dummy on the inside to stir me, but she's away. Rangi Maria stir me, a big dummy! Oh my goodness! I know, I thought they stopped producing Sharknado too. Tune in 5 pm on Sunday to see if they can rip up the Cody tree or not. Sharknado. No, I thought there was only a sequel with Sharknado, but apparently there was five. The Black Ferns have a calendar of games coming up with the Laurie O'Reilly and the inaugural WXV1 against old foes France, Wales and England. Preparations will be crucial, which is probably why we saw Ruahe de Mont down at the famous Rifles Field with a new kicking coach. One kicker, one coach, one goal. Wait. Is he Dags teaching Ruahe to kick? Yeah. <laughs> what is he Man's got good banter, but he like <laughs> knows how to nudge the ball over the post. Oh. Oh. Do you have any fond kicking memories or not so fond kicking uh, memories? Yes, so 2016, uh, we were playing Argentina and Hamilton and I've been practicing all week. I said, Bodhi, Bodhi, if there's an opportunity, throw the ball to me and I have a kick. Because well, the reason why is I was trying to go overseas and if you can kick goals, you get paid more. <laughs> 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 and Bodhi threw me the ball. Karen Reid looked at me and he goes, I was like, no, 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 I got it, I got it. And I kicked it from about 48 and I nailed it through the middle. You know, he could kick Smitty like that? Absolutely. And what kind of pills of wisdom has he given you? Just, um, I guess he's kept it real simple, which is always best, you know, just head down, follow through, kick beyond. Yeah. yeah. She's an absolute superstar. She can kick goals, um, you know, what she was able to do for the Black Ferns last year. You know, she's got that uh, superstar status, presence. Are you able to give me some tips? I, th I feel like if you can coach me and I can get it through. I'm just looking you up and down. <laughs> um, I don't think you're uncoachable. <laughs> when you're ready, just look at the ball for about three seconds and then just go through with the kick. Okay. Keep your head down. I did not expect that! All right, that was too easy. We're going to go back a bit more. Make it a bit harder for Taylor, eh? Come on, back to the 22. Don't worry about the distance, same kick. Oh, no! <laughs> I think uh, when I'm you go done. back to your league team, you just stay on the wing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, team. I think she's ready. Real Hay is definitely ready. This crowd goes wild. <laughs> I am not getting the call. <laughs> She doesn't need it. She's got the call up for County's Monaco uh, Rep League. Taylor, our girl did, after one season of playing club. Congratulations. Pretty cool. All right, Pretty finally cool. tonight, we'd like to apologise for putting this next segment last, but truth be told, if we put it first, most of you would change channels straight after. I know Uncle Y would anyway. He smashed him, bro! Smash him, bro! I liken this shot to seeing me in the nude for the first time. At first, it doesn't look very impressive. Coming out of the line. But when you zoom right in and you get a little drunk, you realise, yeah, it's good enough. <laughs> Justin Olam, smash <laughs> down, bro! <laughs> Found mostly in Alaska, the ghostly Jeff Falcon is the biggest falcon on the planet. This is the Whoa. second largest. Straight into his melon. I thought for a moment it was the ball, it was Marty's headgear. Yeah, this Gold Coast Falcon is called the Reed Marnie and it uses its head to attack its prey. But today, the ball lives to play another day to Steedon. Smash down, bro! Oh. Not naming names, but I fantasise about doing this to a storm almost every day. What? Oh, and I was there. Jordan Ricky up in his face. It'll never happen because this person is far more physically gifted than me and will trample me like a grape in a vineyard. Jordan Ricky, smash down, bro! Speaking of more manly than me. Oh, oh. oh that is George Tafua back at Manly with Vallega. The manly winger turned Alex Seafarth into a rug for his sea eagle nest. Raymond Vallega, smash down, bro! And this week's number one is what I like to call a cemetery pass. Oh, Billy Smith, wiped out by Thompson. Oh, strong tackle that. Look at it come to celebrate. Rugby League! <laughs> yes, forget the hospital. This pass can get straight into the hearse and deliver Billy Smith to the graveyard because Isaac Thompson smashed him bro! No one actually died in the making of the Smashed and Bros. Everyone's fine. Yeah. Everyone's Everyone totally is fine. fine. Up the wires. Up they, the wires. Up the wires. They play Penrith at 6 p.m. Zulm time. Oh, and they wanted that, so, you know, we go with it. They yeah, all said it. Go. Dylan said it. Sean said it. They all wanted it. Yeah. 
flush the dunny what happened at Red Club or Brisbane and move on. Uh, yeah, That's fine. exactly. I actually didn't even watch that game. Did you Did, watch that game? I watched that game. I had it on mute. And I kept looking up and I was like, oh, it's 22 now. Uh, okay. Oh, well. Whatever. Anyway, goodbye. Thanks. See ya. Yeah. Bye. 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 Back Thursday. Bye. Thank you. Bye. I'm Mike Salah. Bye. I'm Mike Salah.